And the next question is, do you quote from your book? I think it's in chapter 10. You said that there is not yet a pill that can extend your healthy lifespan. Now, two years later, have you changed your mind? Have you changed your opinion on longevity drugs? Because in recent years, there are... Not. <laughs> for example, uh, the rapamycin, NMN, uh, or D plus Q. The, isn't there even one anti-aging drugs that you find most promising? I mean, I can tell you what I find most promising, but what's really frustrating is that we haven't had mm -hmm. human trials that would tell us one way or the other, because all of the evidence is sort of pulling different pieces of evidence together, so to speak. So for example, I think metformin is a potentially exciting longevity drug. This is a diabetes drug that we've seen observationally seems to perhaps slow down aging, perhaps slow down the risk of cancer in people with diabetes. But what we really need to do is do a proper randomized trial where we get a bunch of people in their 60s or 70s who haven't got diabetes and give them metformin, uh, give half of them metformin, give half of them a placebo that doesn't have any effect and see who lives longer, see who gets less age-related disease. And this trial is called TAME, I talk about in the book. It's uh, called Targeting Aging with Metformin. That's what the acronym stands for. But frustratingly, that trial hasn't been funded and hasn't yet been commenced. So we just don't have that sort of definitive human answer. I think you, you mentioned rapamycin as well. I think I and probably a lot of aging biologists are more excited by rapamycin than by metformin because we've got a huge amount of evidence in animals that rapamycin seems to slow down the aging process. And it even most excitingly seems to slow down the aging process if started very late in life. So if you give rapamycin to mice aged about 20 months, uh, which is sort of 60 years old-ish in human years because obviously mice live less long than we do, even giving the drug this late in life, it extends their lifespan, it keeps them healthy. So that's you know, obviously very exciting for all those of us who are already a little bit old. You don't have to start this at birth in order to get the full effect. You can start it when you're you know, even in late middle age and experience some serious health benefits potentially. But again, we just haven't had a clinical trial for rapamycin, so it's impossible for me to say this will definitely work in humans. I can say it works in lots and lots of different animals we've tested it in. I can say it works in mice with loads of different dosings, with loads of different times at which, of life in which the rapamycin is administered. But it's just really hard to say, you know, go out and everyone start taking rapamycin when we haven't had that critical human trial. I think the senolytics, bizarrely, might be the ones that sort of win the race here because um, rapamycin and metformin, I, I would say it's very easy for them uh, to sort of win this race because if we just do the trial and find out whether or not they work, these are drugs that are very, very cheap. They're what's called off patent. So that means they were invented so long ago that you no longer sort of owe fees when you create these things. And so if we did the trial and found that they worked, we could literally start handing these out you know, tomorrow because they're very, very cheap, they're widely available. We understand the side effects of these drugs because we've been using them for a very long time. So that would be a very easy sell, whereas analytics are a more experimental therapy. But they might actually make it to market sooner just because there are so many companies really trying to do this. There are clinical trials ongoing right now. The first senolytic clinical trial actually started in 2018. And as I say, at first, this is going to be for specific diseases. But, you know, the, 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 rate, the rate at which rapamycin and metformin are going, it might be that the analytics get all the way to being an anti-aging drug before we've actually run the trials, which is really frustrating. And I think just another example of why this field needs some more funding. Yeah, I think we still need more valid human trials to persuade us. Um, your book provides plenty of suggestions on daily and practical approaches to live longer, like don't eat too much or getting enough sleep. Among those approaches, which do you consider to be the most crucial one? I think, unfortunately, the most crucial ones are the most boring. And so number one, absolutely number one, is do not smoke. If you're smoking and hoping to live a long, healthy life, that's not going to work. If, and if you're thinking, oh, you know, it's going to take a few years of my life, but I don't want to live to 90 anyway because I'm going to spend my last 10 years in a nursing home, you've got to remember that smokers not only have a shorter life, but they also have a shorter health span as well. They, uh, they basically age faster in every respect. Um, so, you know, really, really, if you're smoking, that's something that you, you want to try and quit as fast as possible. And I think if I was going to pick another piece of exercise, another piece of health advice, sorry, I would go for exercise. And exercise, there's this sort of joke among doctors that if exercise were a pill, everybody would be queuing up to take that pill because it's just so powerful. It doesn't just reduce your risk of things like heart disease, uh, which you know you can imagine because when you're you're exercising, you can feel your heart pumping in your chest, you can feel it's benefiting your lungs and your muscles directly. But it also seems to reduce the risk of certain kinds of cancer. It even reduces the risk of dementia by improving uh, various aspects of the blood flow in your brain, maybe by decreasing inflammation around the body. Nonetheless, I mean, I th and I think what's exciting about these boring bits of health advice, having called them boring, is that when you understand the aging biology, these things essentially slow down the aging process. It's not quite uh, an exact mapping, but nonetheless, 
these things are far more powerful, I think we sometimes give them credit for. If they can literally make you live longer and healthier and are slowing down not just one part of your biology's aging, but the whole of your biology's aging, then suddenly I'm much more compelled to you know, go out for a run and make sure I keep up with my exercise schedule because it just has this incredible power to keep us younger for longer.